Welcome back. It's so nice to see you here. I'm looking forward to showing you the first part of the double diamond, or actually the last one, because we'll start at the end. I'll show you why. Um, in this video, we're just looking into how all the pieces fit together in the end and what your deliverables will be to your client. In the last quarter of the double diamond, over here, the goal is to validate all your work and provide the final concepts to your customers. Um, just a quick recall about the whole process so you know where you're standing right now. Over here up to the left, in the first phase, we do our research to understand our users. Then in the second part, we synthesize a shared vision of what we're actually trying to solve. The third phase is all about exploring possible alternative solutions. And in the fourth quarter, we validate those concepts, often through usability testing of prototypes. Now, you might be asking yourself, Tim, why are we starting at the end? That doesn't make sense. Well, see, there are two reasons for this. The further back you go in the process, over here, the more familiar and concrete the methods are for most people, because the benefits are obvious uh, to the stakeholders and it's fairly easy to get funding for them. The second reason for starting at the end is while we apply those methods, your ability to find these blind spots is key for you to be able to create your own process. And every time during the course we will hit one of these assumptions, I'll show you the assumption meter going wham! So you know this is where we need more research in a previous phase of the process. I'll show you three different prototypes and when to use them. The first one I want to show you is a low fidelity prototype. It's a very simple alternative. You just create the main screens and conduct a walkthrough. You can draw it by hand or in balsamic. Now, I advise to not use tools that are capable of designing the real thing, for example, Sketch or Photoshop, because you'll get distracted in details. Your goal is to draw the whole prototype in one hour. It's really about the fundamental concepts. It's not about how the components themselves are built, it's just how the whole app flows. So the next one that I want to show you is a paper prototype. It is a bit more fleshed out than the previous one. So what you do is you draw all the main screens of your app. For example, in our case, this would be like a story about a VIP with a particular clothing here. You can tap the buy button. So you put this here and then the user taps the buy button. You show him the modal window, overlap it. Um, there he has got a drop down. So once the user clicks it, you have this uh, post-it note with the prepared drop-down, you put this on here, the user clicks, and on you go. That is what you do in a paper prototype and a usability test. Drawing the whole paper prototype with the concept stuff and everything will take you roughly about two days, and it is a great opportunity to include your stakeholders, have them come in, join them, and everybody together draws out this paper prototype. For our example app, the, our marketing department found out in interviews that most of our customers closely follow movie stars and musicians and are trying to buy the same styles in our store. So the idea is to bring this to the app. We want to show them pictures of these set stars along with pieces from our collection to achieve the same style. This will be presented in a personalized way, custom tailored based on the user's shopping history, and for us, we got the chance to build our digital fashion assistant app from scratch. So that is where we start. Now, the first screen that we might want to design is probably the home screen. In the beginning, we don't exactly know which particular style the user is looking for. So my suggestion would be to have several smaller cards on the home screen displaying different suggestions, if that makes sense for you. But then there's Hicks law, which states that too many options prevent users from deciding anything at all. So maybe we should only show like one suggestion and provide them with alternatives inside the content. Wham! Goes the assumption meter. 
This is a point where we need more research to understand if our users already have something particular in mind or if they're browsing our suggestions with a broader state of mind. We don't know. I can't decide this. I have ideas of what could work better, but I don't know. So this is where we need more research. Okay, so let's do something else first, shall we? Um, how about the details page? That one's easy, right? We need a lot of big pictures, little text, and wait. Should we only include pictures of celebrities? And maybe like our models wearing our garments? Because like, see, my reasoning is that most celebrities are way slimmer than our average customer. And our customers know that, so they might think this looks good on them, but I doubt it would fit me. So they will move on without buying anything. Um, we could have customers sub um, submit their own pictures. Um, that might be an idea, but that has many issues of its own and we'd have to invest in engaging our audience and wham! Assumptionometer, bam! This is where we need more research again. See, this is the point where you're like, hmm, we could, we should, maybe. If you've reached that point, you haven't done enough research. You get the point. If we start designing without research, most of our design decisions are based on assumptions. And with every assumed design decision, we add more uncertainty to our product. And UX is here to reduce exactly that. The next prototype I want to show you is the Hi-Fi prototype. It shows the design um, in, in real details. The question is, is it a prototype or is it a design guideline? Both are valid, but check the expectations first. If it's a prototype, don't waste time on details. If it's a design guideline, on the other hand, be super precise with details and annotate all the micro-interactions in there so people can follow them later on. And even if it's just a prototype, from my own experience, I can tell you, it can quickly get into a design guideline since it's already there. It happened to me, so here is a free pro tip. Add a big, fat, red prototype mark on every screen you produce. You can thank me later. The next method I want to talk about are wire flows. It's basically combining pages of your digital prototype to create a walkthrough through your app. As you can see here in our app, we've got the home screen linking to the detail page, which in turn is linked to similar styles. So this shows how a user would navigate through the app. The important part here is use only one wire flow per use case. If you have more use cases, create new wire flows. Another point here is make sure that whatever technology you use to create your wire flows, they're easily updatable. For example, you prepare the stories for your devs for the next three sprints with detailed wire flows. And after sprint number one, you need to change something fundamentally like the main car design in your app or something like that. All your wire flows for the second and third sprint are now outdated. If you don't update them, yeah, you risk that they get implemented with an old specification. So to fix this, I usually split my wire flows and design guidelines. So wire flows are only showing interaction patterns, maybe even on a low to mid fi prototype, while I have a design guideline that shows how to implement all these controls. And that is exactly the next point that I want to show you. That is a really good deliverable. And I personally think every medium to larger UAs to create your wire with some form of design documentation. It doesn't have to be a large design documentation or anything. Just write down the most important parts like topography, colors, buttons, all the important controls in your application. It's not like creating a whole design system or anything. It's just to document your thoughts for the afterworld. You can do this with several tools, maybe PowerPoint works perfectly fine for this, um, or Sketch with Zeppelin if you're working on, on a Mac. The whole Adobe palette is fine, uh, Envision Studio, or 
You could even take your HTML prototype if you design your prototype in HTML like I do. I've put a list of UX tools in the link below, so have a look around, you'll find something that works for you. Well, time to sum it up. We already reached the end of the first video here, and we learned how you prototype and test your designs here in the last part of the Double Diamond. So that was it for the first Double Diamond video. 